Relationships are very fluid. It changes all the time. And so what I am currently in right now is totally different than a few months ago, which is totally different from last year, which is totally different from, you know, so, and I think that's really important because when you look at your partner or your partners, you have to realize this person is always changing and it's up to you to put in that effort and work to change together and make that work out or figure out, um, how they're going to currently fit in with where you're at. Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from all over the world to hear their personal journeys of self-discovery through the lenses of love, sex, and relationships. Our mission is to show people that they're not alone and to inspire them to embrace their true selves so that together we can open minds and live authentically without shame. We believe everyone's story is powerful and beautiful, yet it's important to remember that everyone does life a little bit differently and that the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we aren't doctors. Please consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy! Welcome to episode 353. We're Finn and Emma, and today we have a beautiful conversation with May. May is a Los Angeles-based dominatrix, and today she takes us through her relationship journey exploring non-monogamy and how that has woven into her personal work as well. It's a beautiful conversation, if I do say so myself. I'm excited to get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> May found herself in her early 20s getting into relationships being attracted to other people, eventually cheating and then blowing up the relationship and doing that over and over again until she decided to be honest and real with her partners. She eventually found the kink scene when a partner took her to a dungeon night and that kind of took over her life. Yeah, pretty much from that point on, as you'll hear, it sort of consumed her. As she literally says, like, and then that became my life. And so for the next seven years, as she'll talk about, she spent her time exploring, traveling, and figuring out who she is, how to relate to other people, how to have fun. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, sounds like she had a lot of fun. I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie. It sounds like there was a lot of fun being had. And so uh, it sounds like it was a very healing journey, and we're just super excited to share this with you. I think another part about this that I really love is that, as you'll hear, May really thinks about relationships of all kinds sort of as connections and that you can define and agree on roles in a connection and what or how we show up in each other's lives. And so as, as you'll hear her talk about like her work and her personal life and all of these different sort of connections sort of weave together in a way that that really, it's not that there's like a hard line between them. You yeah. know, it's, it's, yeah. it's just about connecting and healing and bringing joy into her life and joy into other people's lives in a way that works for everybody. And so just it's really beautiful. It is. It's a beautiful conversation. And so just again, thank you, May, for coming on, for sharing your story, for reaching out to us and for doing the work that you do. A reminder, you can find links to May's work in the podcast show notes on in your podcast player or on our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. Click on the podcast tab. You won't regret it. No, you can see pictures too. Amazing photos and May's website is also amazing. So please check it out. Check out her work and enjoy this conversation. And with that, for anyone who is a premium subscriber, we will jump into the interview with May now. And for anyone else, we are going to go through a few announcements. First up, if you're not familiar with the premium subscription, we mention it every week. It's a way to pay a few bucks a month and skip these announcements up front. But don't worry, you still get important dates in the outro. To sign up, go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, scroll down on the homepage, and you can sign up there. And those important dates that Emma is talking about, they are sneaking up on us right now. We have an in-person community retreat coming up on September 13th to the 15th, 2024. So that's just about a month away from now. Yay! Yeah? You excited? Yes. Yes. So we tell you about our virtual community every week. And Anybody who is part of the virtual community can come and join us for the in-person retreat here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Don't worry. 
you can still join the virtual community and come out and join us. Yes, there's still time. There is time. We would love to have you join us. First of all, you would get to be a part of the virtual community, which is amazing. You get ongoing support all day, every day. We have men's groups. We have women's groups. We have support calls. And you have over 300 people from all over the world who are exploring non-monogamy or thinking about it or at least just open-minded there to support you and walk the journey alongside of you. Yes, I was going to say, even if you can't come to the September in-person retreat, the virtual community is still there and we would love to have you join. To learn more about both the virtual community and the in-person retreat, you go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. You click on the community tab and you will find a link there for a seven-page, eight-page PDF that (laughs) describes the entire weekend, all of the events we have going on, all of the information you would ever need to make your plans to come out and visit us. And just a little bit below that, there will be a link to apply for the community. It's just five bucks a month. And with that, you would be able to buy yourself a ticket and come out and join the nearly 50 people who are going to be here, maybe over 50, we'll see. And we're super excited. So we'd love to have you come join us. There's not a better time to join the virtual community right now when you get to come and be also part of the in-person events as well. I think we sold it. Did we sell it? Yes. We'll know if this person listening (laughs) comes and joins us. We'll see you. We'll see you, listener, in just a few weeks. And next up, a reminder about our favorite way to get tested for STIs. It is stdcheck.com. You also hear about us talk about this a lot, but it is the service that Finn and I use to get tested for STIs. It is discreet and really easy to use. So go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. Using the links on the resources page will save you $10, making a 10 panel test only $129. And you get to support the show and know your sexual health status. So go and use those links. We appreciate it. That's a lot of ands. It's a lot of ands. I would just say really quick about all of these things that we talk about up front. We don't talk about stuff every week that we don't absolutely love and believe in. And this is one of those services. As Emma said, we use it We use it ourselves, and we've loved it for years. Same with our community. Mm -hmm. Use it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Loved it for years. Yes, yes. Good addendum. We're not not just out here selling snake oil. (laughs) Very true. A final reminder, reach out to us. Send us a voicemail. Send us an email on the Contact Us page of our website. We would love to hear from you. We'd love you to come on as well. Yes, you can come on and share your story. You don't have to be an L.A.-based dominatrix who has a very interesting relationship with Easter eggs. <laughs> Ooh. Did you forget about that story? Until you just said it. <laughs> we'll see you all on the other side. Welcome to the podcast, May. We're excited to talk to you today. We know a little bit about your work, but not very much. So we're excited to dive in and learn a lot more about you and who you are. So thank you so much for reaching out and being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're looking forward to this. I mean, I bit of self-serving podcast because we love to get to know people. So, I mean, maybe just let's start there. Like, who is May and maybe what inspired you to reach out today? And then we'll figure out where to go from there. I am a Los Angeles-based dominatrix. And I reached out because... I'm just so happy that nowadays there's so much content and so much information everywhere that I feel like it's really helping people kind of guide and framework their life to what they want it to be. Because when I was going through this, I was just like, is anybody out there? Hello? Am I alone in this? Oh, this sucks. And then I like didn't know much about you know, like what resources to reach out to and whatnot to look up and just like certain keywords would be even really helpful. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm here to just get people who are feeling that way to realize, oh, there's more out there. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Like the, just the concept that like the words like polyamory or compersion, like so many of these words that you're like now maybe being in it long enough, you kind of take them for granted, but you realize that like, that's not this, the common language necessarily for everybody. And so, yeah. So grateful you reached out and glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. I, I'd love for you to describe a little bit about your relationship structure and the way you approach relationships now, and then we'll dive back in time to how you got here. Yeah. Relationships are very fluid. 
it changes all the time. And so what I am currently in right now is totally different than a few months ago, which is totally different from last year, which is totally different from, you know, so, and I think that's really important because when you look at your partner or your partners, you have to realize this person is always changing and it's up to you to put in that effort and work to change together and make that work out or figure out, um, how they're going to currently fit in with where you're at. And so where I'm at now is I have a primary partner and I have a new partner uh, that I started. I don't say the word dating because I'm in denial of it because yeah. I'm like, oh, that is too serious. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, this is the onboarding trial progress. There process. we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how well it goes. <laughs> and um, I have a couple lovers here and there around the world because I travel so much. So, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Doing. Amazing. I love that too, that you said like how much we're, we're all in flux, yeah. you know, at every point. And, and I think too, like you said, like it's, it's up to each of us to either, I think either change together or give the space for each other to change and then look at what you each are, who you each are and say, well, how do, how do our puzzle pieces fit now, right now that I have these corners and edges and you have these new ones, how do our puzzle pieces fit together versus like, let's just keep trying to smash them like we did three months ago. It's not easy to do. Yeah. And it requires so much work and effort. And I feel like because you're constantly putting in the work to make the relationship work, it's uh, kind of always new. There's always that new challenge and it shows that effort and care and how important the relationship is to you. Whereas in my mind, a monogamous relationship kind of falls into this monotony of like, okay, great. Now what? Like you don't have to date the person as much anymore because you are all that you have. And so there's not that feeling of like, oh, I got to try, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. or like that healthy competition aspect. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's easy to get complacent mm-hmm. in it and just sort of let it coast and let it be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So taking us back a little bit, where did this all, this whole journey start for you? I don't even know. <laughs> During a while, I would say like early 20s, maybe 20. 23 when I started dating like when I was dating someone seriously and I was just like uh, kind of wanting to cheat but not really cheat because I was like that's a what a bad person would do and it would just like I would feel overwhelmed with this like struggle in myself of like no but I'm a good girlfriend I don't do that and I'm like but other people are cool too. And I would feel so guilty about like looking or talking or flirting with somebody else. And uh, yeah, I was just like, okay, this is not working out. And I just didn't know any better. So I would eventually cheat and then destroy the relationship. And then they would cheat and like, you know, it was just messy. Mm-hmm do that a few times and you're like, hold on, how about we like get honest and real here? And then you talk it out and you're like, oh, wow, that's nice. Honesty is real nice. <laughs> yeah. It were works. You, right? uh-huh. were, were you ever able to do that with a partner at, at a point where maybe one or both of you had cheated on the other and then to be able to come back and be like, okay, like all, all bullshit aside, like, what what's going on here for us? Or were you sort of at that point, like outside of any particular partnership kind of doing the introspective work? Um, at that point, once the cheating occurred, it was kind of like the big blow up bomb, yep. you know, of like, this is it, the end. And so there was no going back and being like, okay. And when I did talk to them, 
afterwards, like after the fact, after everything, yeah, they were all like, no, I'm monogamous and that's not going to work for me. And I was like, oh, okay, good. Great. Good to know. <laughs> now that's completely in the past. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Did you have any framework for non-monogamy, like, bef- you know, before your early 20s, like growing up, did you have examples of it or was it in your sort of worldview or was you just, were you just sort of creating it from scratch once you kind of went through some of these ruptures with other partners? I guess we all have some sort of framework with it. Because if you are not an only child, Mm -hmm. because your parents have multiple kids, and so your relationship and love dynamic with them is all different. And so you kind of see that. So I guess that's similar to what I wanted as an adult too, like different types of relationships. Yeah, but growing up, I never had family, friends, or family that had multiple partners. So it wasn't really like a role model shape Mm -hmm. to look at or anything. Mm -hmm. Didn't see it in any movies. I didn't see it in any media, which now it's being like, you know, produced, which I'm like, yay, this is great. (laughs) Right. Which leads me to my baby sister. Oh my gosh. So my, uh, parents remarried and uh my dad has a younger daughter my baby mm-hmm. sister and she like tells me everything and this is great because she's like so i'm dating three people right now and mind you she's 13 years old <laughs> and i'm like shut up what the <laughs> fuck and she's like well, I'm not sure if I'm lesbian. So there, one of them is a girl and the other girl and there's another girl and she's bisexual and then another guy. And I was just like, wow, I was just really getting all of it all at once. Huh? <laughs> wow. You might as well just figure it out now because, you know, it's going to save you a lot of heartache and yeah, this is great. Yeah, Good. Yeah. I'm like here for it. And then she's like, next week later, she's like, I'm engaged. And I'm like, did you guys even kiss yet? And she's like, ew, that's gross. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And then the <laughs> next week later, I was like, how's your engagement? And she's like, oh, we're over it. And I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're just moving through it and being super fluid with it. It's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it that she's experiencing all of that. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and it seems like it's so normal, right? Like for her, it's not there's no stigma on it at the moment, right? Like she hasn't gotten to that point. Exactly. You're at the age where like nothing matters. There's no shame or guilt or anything. It just is. And so I'm like, have at it, girl. Like go have fun. Yeah. 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 I love that. Well, I'm I'm curious (laughs) for you as well, maybe what, when, so you come out of these ruptured partnerships kind of going, okay, cheating, not working. Uh, maybe there's a different way. What? Where did that take you? Like, what were your next steps? It wasn't until I found the kink scene, BDSM and kink okay. scene. And from there, I was like, oh, why is it that I can have multiple play partners, but I can't have multiple partner partners? And I was like, isn't that kind of the same? just like kind of different like each person's role is different per se and that was when it kind of clicked in my head I was like oh uh, yeah and so now I have like a multitude of relationships will you say right because I have relationships with my play partners my clients my submissives and on top of that my partnerships Mm -hmm. who I also play with. So it's just like a wide variety of people that you have connections with. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a connection is a friendship. A connection is a partnership. A connection is a DS dynamic. And so I feel like we all have that. And as long as everybody is clear on what that dynamic looks like and understands their role yeah it can work out 
pretty smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you kind of say that, that like in, in right, you have all the variety of relationships and partnerships that you kind of lay out there, but like we can say like, well, we have a relationship with our landlord and you have a relationship with all of these different people. And you, most of those are like very clearly defined. Like I talk to my landlord when I need something fixed or when I'm late on rent. Right. And there's no other expectation that like, I'm going to wake up and be like, Hey, good morning, landlord. I hope you have a good day today. Right. Like we've, totally. those are like baked in, but when you start moving into this world of like a play partner, and it's easy, I think, you know, to go, one person goes, well, this is just tonight and I'll probably never talk to you again. And the other person might be thinking, well, we hooked up or we had some fun together. I would love some aftercare in the morning. And often those conversations get missed. And that's where I think the people, people start to get hurt and things get confusing. So what I love though, that like at the core, you're like, well, they're all just connections. And then if we can talk about them, we can, we can move through them in a pretty, sort of useful way. Mm -hmm. I would also like to expand those into your chosen family, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's your friends. It's um, uh, for me in the recent years, it's like getting adopted grandparents. It's these people that uh, my partner had been in an Airbnb with them and they no longer Airbnb it out. But every time we go to visit that city, we message them and they're like, yeah, come stay with us. Right. And so we just like, and they're like 80 years old and we just stay with them and we just have the best time of like these family dinners. And yeah, they're like, we see you guys way more than we see our own kids. And I'm like, great. Cause we love being here and spending time with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. you find your that. people. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious. So you, it sounds like you're you're opening into the world of we'll call it alternative relating. Sure, was the kink scene and finding that. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious if you could take us back to that. Like, what what did that look like? How did you find it? And what was it like the first time you sort of walked into that environment? And we're looking at the like the landscape of what was available and possible. Yeah, uh, my first introduction to it was a rope bondage thing, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I did not know what I was signing up for, but I'm here for it. And then, as I'm getting tied up, I was like. Is there more to this? And the girl's like, yeah, like there's a whole lot more to this. And I was like, <laughs> what else is there? And she's like, are you free uh, this weekend? I was like, yeah, let's. And then she took me to a dungeon. And I was like a fucking kid in a candy store. I was just like, yes, like all of this stuff. I was just so excited running around, like wanting to try everything. And, um, yeah, that became my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, from that point on, I was just like going to play parties every weekend, meeting up with people I'll play with, and it became like a lifestyle for me for seven years. I traveled the world, meeting people, learning from them, and like having these unique experiences with them and connecting and bonding with them. And then after that, I was like, wouldn't it be nice if I could make money off of this? Yeah, because I imagine you're still working this whole time. Yeah, I was still working this entire time. And I was like, I don't want to work anymore. I want to do this. And I was like, holy shit, I could be doing this with the home. <laughs> but because I lived the lifestyle for seven years, I am so full of like gratitude. And it really embedded in me of a why I was doing this. It was to connect with people. It was to share my passion. It was to heal and have this like space held for me and hold it for others, um, to work through some trauma and stuff. And so, yeah, now that I get paid for it, I'm like, this is insane. This is great. You know, like I love it. <laughs> so the money hasn't jaded me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Well, and are you still able to like enjoy it on a personal level? Like I, I'm sure like when you're doing your work, yeah. that's still gratitude. I'm sure you still are enjoying that, but do you still get to drop into it just for like 
purely for me? For sure. Because everybody's dynamic is different, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my dynamic with the play partners, my dynamic with the submissive client or whatever, it's so different that when I do it for myself, I'm just like, fuck yeah, like I deserve this. This is great. And it reminds me of the core reason of why I do it, of why I got into this in the first place. Yeah, I'm super grateful that whilst in the past I was just like making everybody's fantasies come true, now that I've been doing it for so long, I have a stable of subs who are like, well, what's your fantasy? Let's make that come true. And I'm like, oh my gosh, me? This is great. (laughs) So those relationships have like gotten even deeper, right? Mm -hmm. So my relationships with some of my clients are even deeper than some acquaintances that I see in, you know, the same community. Mm -hmm. Because this is like super special connection bond that's really deep and raw. Yeah. And other people is just like surface level small talk because we're in the same group all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Well, and the money doesn't, I think what just, what I hear in that is the money doesn't devalue the connection, right? Like, yeah, there is, there's sure there's an exchange of money, but the connection you have with a client in that space while you're together or even in between is like, very real, very deep and and very authentic. Like you're, you're not just showing up, you know, as an, as an actress perhaps, right? Like it's, it's, it's legitimate. It's, it's real. For sure. And if you do encounter somebody who is quote unquote acting, they can totally tell that like, you're not into it. You're not having a good time. It's like, yeah, sure. A woman can fake an orgasm, but like you can kind of tell. (laughs) (laughs) right yeah there's subtle differences there and for sure yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) and you you mentioned like the the core reason that you do this work and i i just want to verify because i believe what you meant was the core reason you said a little bit ago was around healing and connection yeah i mean everybody that's a human wants to connect Everybody is here searching for some level of intimacy with somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I offer is that these taboo things or these weird things that like wouldn't be socially acceptable can be normal and is totally cool. And so for people to have that option of exploring that in a safe space is just so much more. Mm, connecting than, you know, trying it with somebody who's not into it or trying to talk somebody into this thing yeah. when they yeah. don't really want to. And then you can tell that they're like feeling obligated to do this thing for their partner, which is why you're pulling the first place <laughs> because you have multiple people who are like, super stoked to do this thing with you and just because your primary partner or your partner or your lover doesn't want to that's fine yeah and Mm -hmm. everybody can be happy Mm -hmm. well and i think too in that there's a difference between hey i'm not sure i'm into this but i want to try it i'm excited to give it a go or even hey it's not my thing But like, I love to do it with you and like i think those can both exist but there is still a difference of you know, it's not my thing, but I love to do it with you versus you get to do it with somebody who like, it's their jam. And that's all like, they're just so jazzed up about it. Like both are powerful experiences, but they're also very different and sort of meet a different need often. Totally. And I love like one of the ways that I fall in love with somebody is watching them do the thing that they're really good at you know, that they're really passionate about. Like watching somebody cook who's like a chef is just like, uh, yes, please. (laughs) And so when you're interacting with somebody who is quote unquote an expert in that realm, right? It really takes it up a notch of what your experience is going to be in that realm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, I love that. 
I'm I'm also curious as, as so this sort of seven year exploration window that you are in and and I, I guess i want to just caveat this is like i'm not i don't feel like in there you should have been making deeper partnerships or forming polyamory like no no expectation of that but i'm just curious along that along the way of sort of in the placing traveling the world did you find yourself going deeper with people and having to figure out like oh shit i feel like maybe i'm falling in love with this person and this person or I'm in love with both, but they're different. How do I do that? Like, did that start to come up for you at all? Yeah, I had one main prior uh, uh, primary partner then during that exploration period for four years, five, four and a half. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Numbers don't really matter. No, nope, four a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, throughout that time period, we were both having other partners and seeing other people at the same time and we're both travelers. And so we got together and traveled together. And when we were apart, we had other partners and whatnot. Yeah. And he opened my eyes to so much of what was possible and brought me along to, uh, on his dates. And I would meet people that he would just like have met for the first time. And I was like, okay, are we like on a thruple date kind of thing? What is happening? And nothing needs a label either, right? Nothing needed to make sense. Nothing needed a label. It was just kind of going with the flow of like, wow, you're really cool. I would like to hang out with you. Oh, you're also really cool. Like, I would like to spend time with you. And Maybe having specific words would have been nice to kind of feel like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm feeling. But, uh, yeah, because things change so frequently, as soon as you label it, it gets changed to something else. (laughs) So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, it doesn't really matter anymore. (laughs) Well, which which kind of reinforces like the need for somewhat constant like check-ins, you know, maybe not every day, but you know, maybe every week or two. I mean, we we know a lot of people who they're like, yeah, we do a weekly relationship check-in or a bi-weekly and we just kind of get up to speed on where each other are at. Because yeah, the label, like, oh, we're polyamorous, like that could uh, that's a huge umbrella, right? And so figuring out what that means for you and the people you're in relationship with at any given time is just a, it's ever changing. Yeah. And because it's changing all the time, depending on where you're at in your relationship, like how stable it is, the level or the frequency of these check-ins might increase Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, but having the flexibility of, what certain dynamics will look like and understanding that certain things require a different level of care depending on what state or level or emotional status of everyone is, is like super key. Mm -hmm. And I think that being honest with yourself in the first place is like, the main thing because how are you supposed to have these check-ins with each other if you're like not checking in with yourself in the first place does this feel good to me Mm -hmm. or am i doing this because i think they will love me more or i feel obligated because i'm their primary or because this is the day we're supposed to check in so we're gonna do it (laughs) like you know but if you're not feeling it don't do it (laughs) Yeah, which is right. I mean, then it pings all those insecurities of, oh, well, if we miss it, they'll love me less or they might leave me or something. So I just, I should power through because that's just what we do versus like, yeah, what do I actually need in this moment? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Easy to do. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> If only it was that easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually curious on that front, maybe like for you, as you started to navigate this world, did you find it fairly intuitive and easy for you? Or was it like you were stomping on toes all over the place and like had to do a whole lot of like realignment for how you move through the world? 
for the first part, I didn't realize I could state what I wanted as much. And I was kind of more of a people pleaser. Once I started doing my work professionally, I was like, oh, fuck that. I have needs and boundaries. Like, <laughs> so after my work and all that, I became much more in tune with what was required for me to feel good in these dynamics. At that point, I was just also like, I'm used to saying what I want because of my work. And so it became so much easier to navigate, to be unapologetically like, this is what I need right now. And this is what I want. Yeah. And just say that. And understanding that not everybody is going to say yes to that. Not everybody is going to be able to fill that. But being able to verbalize that and speak it out loud, which is the first step, right? Which is then when the universe will be like, oh yeah, you want that? Here you go. <laughs> but when you can't say it, nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And people are like, well, you've been with me so long. You should know me. And I'm like, nah, man. <laughs> we also change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you hide everything <laughs> yeah. for so long, how would anybody know anybody? Right. right. And we, and we're, right. we're taught so much of what, like so much of what we've talked about for the last half hour is taboo and not typically okay. It gets pushed underground. So of, of course we hide it. Yeah. And it depends on the day and the moon and the cycle and like, you know, like what you normally want would work. But for this very moment, it doesn't because of X, Y, and Z, you know, mm -hmm. like, did you eat yet? No. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the reason. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're all impacted by those like daily things too that impact us and- <laughs> Being more aware of that and how to how to take care of yourself so that you can show up for the conversations and others is so important and can be hard to do. But what I heard in that was the best way to to recover from being a people pleaser is to become a pro dom. So I think that was a <laughs> that was a trick we had not heard before. So I I love that. <laughs> I, I mean, works. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously in jest, but I'm curious. What was that like for you as you started to feel into that? Like, oh, I can say what I want. I can ask what I want. Oh, somebody said no, but that's okay. Like, how how did that really come to be for you? Well, the first part of it was, okay, I'm a pro dom now. Oh, these people have these specific fetishes and desires and fantasies that they want. People pleaser me was like, I have to make that dream come true. And I was like, really? kind of taking a step back and being like, why wasn't that as good? And I was like, oh, because it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I'm leading this thing. And if it's not what I want to do, it's not going to feel good. And so from that point on, I was just like reading their application and being like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm still going to do what I want to do. And like, maybe I'll throw in a little bit of what they want if they deserve it. And ever since then, it's been like the best time ever because they're just like, oh, I never tried this. I never did this. And you're exposing them to new and different things that people didn't know they would like, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or different flavors of stuff or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you only know what you like when you've been exposed to it. And even at that point, right? There's so many different styles, so many different um, methods or different flair to it. So yeah. Yeah. Go with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, and I think it translates. I mean, sure, we, we're talking about it in the context of a, a profession, but I, it translates it, so much more. It, well, yeah. It translates well outside of that, right? Because We've all had an experience, or probably many of us have had an experience where you show up, you're maybe going to have like a sexual experience with somebody or even just a date. And it's like, it's not going well. And you're like, oh, I'm trying really hard. I'm trying to meet them where they're at. What's not? What? And then like, 
they're probably doing the same thing. And at the end of it, you're both like, well, neither of us really got what we wanted. We were so busy trying to give the other person, like if we both could have come at the forefront and said, I would love this date to look like this. And they're like, Oh, I would like it like to look completely different. Well, we at least know where we're both at now. Like maybe we can find a common ground or maybe we both stand there and go, we shouldn't, we shouldn't go on this date. We shouldn't hook up. Like we just, we are so far apart. We shouldn't, or, Hey, I think there's common ground here, here, and here. Let's, let's have a blast there. But so much of that gets, we just sweep it under and try to acquiesce and, and hope hope that it's good. And if we just power through. Yeah. And so much of what you do is learned from your previous relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is how my parents showed love to each other. So this is how I'm going to show love to you. And you're like, no, no, let me tell you how I want love to be shown to me. (laughs) And people are like, wait, what? That's, that's what you want. Oh, okay. And so like what you did for other partners or other lovers doesn't work for everybody. And so learning to speak what really works for you is going to speak volumes for that dynamic and that relationship to work. Mm -hmm. So the, new partner that's in trial right now (laughs) because we're not quote unquote dating (laughs) it's been since february and we have not kissed and we have not had penetrative sex and i'm like all for it you know i'm like this is great this feels good for us Mm -hmm. and people are just like you guys haven't kissed what the fuck is wrong with you and i'm like you don't understand it. It's our thing and it works and it's like great. And now I'm kind of like, how long can we not kiss for? (laughs) This is is fucking fun. you know. (laughs) Cause like we both want to, but like the tease, the buildup, it's like the struggle is so nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And me writing like the, the narrative that it's like, you have to do X, Y, Z in these orders in the relationship and build these things. Like the fact that you're even like, I don't even know if dating's the right word for this person, but this person is important. I want to mention them. I'm building this. I'm growing this. I'm seeing where it is, but I'm also, you're going at your own pace, having fun, enjoying the build up. And I feel like so much can be learned from that. Like people, you don't have to be in a relationship and just go, 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 go of like, you have to move really quickly or, I mean, you can, it can be really fun, but you don't have to. And I think there can be so much you can learn from your like experience like that. I would say, look at it like a burlesque show. Everyone's like screaming, take it off. Obviously you're at a burlesque show. They're going to take it off, (laughs) but they can take off their clothes for a solid hour. (laughs) And you are entranced. You are sitting there with your jaw dropped open like, what is she going to do next? What are they going to do? Oh, my God. Oh, it's so hot, right? And like, you know, it's going to be there in the end. But it's the journey. It's the process. It's the whole entire thing that keeps you so yeah, entranced. Yeah. And uh Well, and I love too, it sounds like you and this non-partner partner uh, (laughs) are are communicating about it, right? Because it would, again, going back to what I think often will happen in these situations would be you have a story, probably something that maybe yours is, we should be kissing. Why aren't we kissing yet? He must not like me, blah, 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 or they must not like me. And he's over there going, why haven't we kissed yet? They must not like me. I don't know what's going on. And his friends or their friends are telling them you should be doing this if you're not doing that. And and so like, there's all of this shit coming at you. But if you two can sit down and be like, Hey, this is really fucking hot. Like, I know we haven't kissed and I kind of love it. And like, I, whatever, I feel my, my feelings getting deeper and I feel our connection growing stronger and we haven't kissed. And that's super awesome. How do you feel about it? And then it's like everybody else's bullshit just stops mattering. And you two are forming what works for the two of you. And I just, I think that's amazing. Yeah. The relationship that you have with each other is the only thing that matters. Everybody is projecting what their perception of a relationship should look like onto you. 
based on uh, what their knowledge of relationship is. And so, and of course, everybody wants, quote unquote, what's best for you, right? So they're saying, oh, if you haven't kissed yet, then like, is she even really that into you? Or like, oh, she's just stringing you along. You don't know. (laughs) But what's the truth is what you have with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important. Mm -hmm. So like if you're talking to your partner and you're like, hey, I want to open up this relationship. Someone who's outside that doesn't understand Polly would be like, whoa, your relationship's jeopardizing. Fuck, she's not into you anymore. Like, it's time to cut it up and, like, it's the end of it. And you're like, no, this could be the beginning of a new chapter and it could be an exciting new journey and uh, it could make us even stronger because we're going to go through all these unique challenges together. Mm -hmm. So. What's important is the connection you have with each other. Everything else is just noise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I will maybe just throw into that that I think it it gets I think it gets harder in polyamory because it's easy it can be easy to compare and say, well, hold on, you went on one date with this other person and you two have already hooked up and you're having the craziest sex of your life. We've been dating for X number of weeks, months, years, and we haven't even done that thing. So now somehow what we have is less or maybe the other person's like, oh, I have is more. And versus like, no, what we have is ours. Mm-hmm. We do it this way. And and I, I do something different with that person. But like ours is ours is good. Ours is ours. And it doesn't matter what they're doing, what we're doing, what's happening outside of us. But it's so easy to compare. I, I totally. think especially when you come into the worlds of love and sex and intimacy where we all have a lot of wounds and, and stories and fears and shit, just shit piled <laughs> onto us. And then it's, it just gets pinged at every like corner. I kind of see Polly as like scrolling through Instagram. You're like looking at people's partners, right? As like, Oh, and their relationship is like this and you start comparing your relationship to all these other relationships and connections. And after you're scrolling through Instagram for like 30 minutes, you're like, I feel like shit because I've just compared all of this stuff. And it's super unhealthy when all you need to do is really sit there and be like, this person cares about me. This person loves me. I know that. And I don't need to know any of the other stuff if they want to share because that's your dynamic, then like, cool. But yeah, it's knowing that you are enough Mm -hmm. and what is projected out there for others to see is just that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does does it ever come up for you where you start to flip into that of like comparing and where like any of the the jealous feelings or stuff like that, that you've, that you've had to kind of figure out how to work through for yourself? Totally. All the time. (laughs) But I feel like because it's been uh, years now, it kind of gets easier because you understand what you need better. Mm -hmm. Because you understand how to verbalize what you need. Because you learn to have better communication with your partner. So that none of these, it's not that none of them will pop up, they will pop up, but your reaction to it, your response to it is going to be like, huh, okay, cool. I'm happy for you, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of like, oh my God, how could you? (laughs) Super dramatic. Right, right. Yeah, you can, you can, you learn to better communicate your needs and also emotions when they do come up. Mm-hmm. Well, and you get the, I don't know, this analogy just popped into my brain, but it's like you know, when we're kids, right? You lay in bed and you see a coat hanging on a chair and you're like, it's a monster, it's a ghost. And you can, like, your brain is like, for sure, that's what it is. And then you get up and you finally flip the light on. You're like, oh, it's just my coat. <laughs> and like, at a certain point, we can be laying there in bed and go, that's probably my fucking coat. But like it feels like they're leaving me for another partner or they're they're replacing me. But 
like so it's it's still that like muscle is just like constantly working to like retell yourself a different story yeah for sure your brain just does that it wants to be super imaginative and run free and wild and it's like learning how to reel yourself in to only look at the truth what are the facts what's true to you and being like okay this is enough Mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and you're choosing you're choosing that relationship structure you're choosing the the way to go through this and to do that hard work on yourself as you go and at any point you can choose to change that if you want uh anybody can right and so i just i love that you bring up this um ebb and flow of of processes of really of feelings that i love that you bring up this shift that it has gotten easier and it's also still present and it's still there and it likely in some form will always be there but how you navigate it, how you deal with it. And you can also make changes to change things if you feel like you need to at any point. Yeah. Yeah. It's understanding that we are not stuck in anything. We have the power to shape our reality. And if you feel stuck, if you feel like you're trapped in this relationship or connection, that's on you. It's because you're not speaking up for yourself. It's because you're not having these conversations. Yeah, because the other individual is just going to do whatever they need to do so that they feel good. And of course, like a good partner would check in with you. But if you're not going to say anything, nobody's going to know anything. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's so easy to be sitting there going, well, you could have checked in with me. And they could be like, well, you could have checked. And so like somebody somewhere has mm-hmm. to break the cycle and somebody has to step up and say, this isn't, this isn't working. You know, not that you have to go away or I have to, but like, hey, there's something here we should probably think about addressing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, super easy to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, where, where do you see yourself? moving like going in the future so my friend uh just got engaged and they have been proposed to five times wow (laughs) yeah um by the same person and i was (laughs) like i love this for them you know and so it sparks a little healthy competition and challenge with my partner to uh, be like, oh, yeah, one proposal is not good enough. Let's up the ante. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I'm stacking rings. <laughs> <laughs> so so hold on. Was, was your friend continually saying no or was it like they said no, yes? No, they said yes. Okay, and then they just kept coming? They just kept coming because it was like – Going from the shittiest proposal to, like, the most amazing thing ever, right? So, like, the person proposing was continually upping, upping, upping the themselves. Yeah. Which led to healthy competition with my partnership. And they were like, well, I'm going to up yours. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, f- I'm feeling like I did it wrong. I I started with the bar so high when I proposed. I should have brought it way down so I had room, yeah. to, yeah, room to grow. Sure. <laughs> next time. Next time I'll do it right. Yeah. Which That's leads amazing. to multiple weddings, right? Yeah. Um, because they're like, oh, we had five proposals. We we're going to have five weddings. And I'm like, yeah, why do you only need one wedding? You know, because like one wedding day is like so exhausting and you jam pack all these different groups of people together but you can't really be with them and celebrate in that manner so you have multiple weddings and multiple celebrations with each unique one 
So it's like a poly wedding. <laughs> you have like <laughs> for each group of like, yeah. So I love that. And then that. you get to celebrate <laughs> multiple times. Like, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> so you get multiple cakes, which is really the, the main reason for a wedding. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. And with that, with work, um, I have multiple submissives that I have deep connections with. So that means I get to have multiple coloring ceremonies, multiple like big events with them. And uh, I just feel like life is a celebration all the time. And it's so beautiful to share these moments with people, right? It's like, What's special when you travel and you're like, oh, what's the holiday festival cuisine or whatever? It's so, it's, it's like such a big deal, right? To, um, connect in that way. And so, yeah, you get to form your own little mini holidays, anniversary type things, unique, um, flares, rituals with all of it. And, Again, you don't have to fit in with the social norm of whatever holidays there are out there. Mm-hmm. You got to make your own. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> As in, I'm curious if you have, like, is there one that comes to mind? Like what, maybe tradition or t- norm that you've like rewritten that you've like been like, okay, well, sure, you could buy a Christmas tree, but we do something different. Like, is there is there one that like comes to mind that's like, one of your favorites? Um, I always actually, okay, well, this is a little taboo and a little fucked up, whatever. <laughs> so for, uh, Easter. Okay. Um, I've always had people hide Easter eggs around for me to find, okay. which I love. And inside each Easter egg could be like a act of service or a thing that they're going to do for me or money or uh, some other surprise. Um, yeah. So it's, it's that, or it could be poop <laughs> in the egg, a little pieces of shit. <laughs> I think I would implement a smell test before I opened, before I opened any eggs. At well, the- <laughs> <laughs> It's all about like kind of like life is like a box of chocolates. You <laughs> kind of make whatever you can, you know. <laughs> so every year I do this with like a different client or a different friend or a different group of friends. And <laughs> I'm not religious, as you can tell. <laughs> and so, but I love this holiday because I'm like, oh yeah, Easter eggs. <laughs> I can kind of like find these things <laughs> so you make it into a game yeah. that works yeah. yeah for you and different friends and clients and yeah that's awesome uh that's amazing yeah <laughs> and i'll keep that in mind if we ever get invited to the easter egg hunt to <laughs> at least i know now what i'm getting into so it could be a hundred dollars could be some shit. It's good to know. <laughs> could be some shit wrapped up in money. <laughs> All right, it's very. It's a very creative Easter egg. Hunt. <laughs> you got to work for your money. You got to work for your money. I think there's a metaphor Please. in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. I'm. I mean, I have maybe a couple more questions, and and would love to give you a chance to talk about your work as well. Um, but. I guess before we jump into that, I'm just curious, like, how do you, how do you balance this all? Like multiple partnerships, traveling a lot, your own sort of self-care, you know, going to events and play parties, plus all of your, your clients, like how, how do you do it all? What, what does it look like for you? Yeah. I was literally looking at my calendar the other day and I was like, oh, it's so many colors and so many things stacked up every day that I'm just like, oh, what? when did I have time to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> but again, like the relationship with constant check-ins, it leads to feeling 
more balanced, right? So every day I meditate, every day I do a little bit of Qigong. So I have this like internal check-in with myself of like, okay, how's my day? And then every day I kind of like map out my agenda for the day and what it's going to look like and stuff. And if it doesn't feel good, I don't have to do it. You know, I communicate with those people and I can shuffle things around because that's the beauty of having my own business. It is a lot, but also I don't feel like it's a lot because I love doing it. Mm -hmm. It's when, if you get to the point where I'm feeling burnt out, I'm feeling like I'm getting stretched thin because I'm trying to go with this person and then meet up with this person later and then meet up with this person later. That right there, it's like, do you want to though? Do you actually want to though? And if it's a yes, then you're not going to feel like it's a lot. You're going to feel super excited. You're going to feel nourished from it. You're going to feel energized from it. And it's going to keep you going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you sharing. And and I think that that is, to me, it's very real. Like, yeah, you can look at your calendar and it can be stacked up with multiple colors. And if all of those things are like, wow, I'm excited about every one of the 10 things I have to do today versus like, I actually don't want to do eight of these. Like, then it's like, oh, well, why do I keep putting these on my calendar? <laughs> right? Obviously, some things we have to do. Uh, but yeah, we we, I think, often feel I don't know, maybe coming full circle on this, we often feel like we have to do a lot of things in life that maybe we don't have to do, but we we should we feel we should be doing them for other people and other outside expectations that that we're projecting onto ourselves. Which at that point should be a check-in mm-hmm. to be like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. How do you feel about that? And they're like, Oh, I didn't give a shit about that anyways. And you're just like, motherfucker, I've been here doing this because blah blah blah. But again, that's on you because you didn't say what you needed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you assumed that this was what was required from the other person. So, Mm -hmm. And and the trick in all of this is to get to where you can put that check-in on the calendar before the calendar is so full that you can't put the check-in on there. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. (laughs) Well, we couldn't have a meeting because your calendar was full. So, yeah. Yeah. And I... (laughs) never like I live by my calendar and every single time there was a check-in I was just like oh fuck a check-in and it just didn't work for us because I didn't want to do it at that time consistently every week and so I was just like can we just have a check-in when we both feel like we need a check-in and it doesn't need to be every week it could be even more than that Mm -hmm. it could be less than that depending on where we're at And because it's so flexible and so fluid, I feel great about it. I'm just like, I have the time and space right now. Let's do it. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So it feels, again, frame it in some way that feels good for the both of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if your partner's one who's like, well, I need it scheduled and you're like, I need it spontaneous. Where where is our overlap? How how do we do that? You know, what is the yeah. compromise that that both of you can get on the same page with? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I appreciate everything you've shared today. Yeah, this is a wonderful conversation. Yes, I really Thank appreciate you. it too. And I'd love for you to be able to talk a little bit about your work and where people can find you. I know we've woven it through, but just to kind of uh, bring it all together. Uh, you can find everything on my website, missmailing.com, M-I-S-S-M-A-E-L-I-N-G.com. Uh, from there, you will probably fall down several rabbit holes and, uh, then you can contact me and we'll make it come true. <laughs> I love that. I'm curious with, with yeah. like, what, what type of work, like, I mean, pro being a pro dom or a dominatrix, like another one of those big umbrellas, what are some of the, like, the things that you do get lit up and excited about. Yeah. So there's so much within the BDSM realm, right? Yeah. And what's, uh, what I've narrowed it down to is like my core four or five type things. And I'm just going to list them. Mm-hmm. Diaper play, ABDL, uh, 
I love putting people in diapers, <laughs> which <laughs> leads to the mommy dom aspect too. Okay. And then another one would be ball busting. That was my first fetish since fourth grade. Will always be with me. I love it. Um, another one is forced to buy. Uh, I have always uh, been a fan of gay porn, and I didn't know why. And I was like, wait a minute. I could make my own gay porn. So that was really cool. <laughs> um, and then and the newest one that I'm like really deep into right now, which is probably why I have all these poop jokes, is toilet play. <laughs> When I first got started, I was like, ew, I'm not going to do that. And like, again, with everything, a person changes. And now I'm like, poop, let's get into it. <laughs> let's poop on people. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love it. Well, it makes sense then why your Easter eggs are the way Easter- they are. <laughs> right. I have a right. lot more context. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And I, I think I love just like the breadth of like yeah. what what you are excited about and that you then have gotten to create a world and a career that like excites you, mm-hmm. helps other people who are probably thinking nobody was ever going to be into these things. And you're like, hey, over here, me. Yeah. And like yeah. You, get to, yeah. you all get to find each other and like create joy together. Like it's, I don't know. I love it. Yeah. And I'm excited for you. Thank you. And another addition to that in like the poly realm of kink is that I love hosting big parties, like group sessions. Like I'll call in a bunch of my friends or like people will be like, oh, I've always wanted like a orgy type thing or gangbang type thing. I love organizing those. Or like with my femsa, with my female submissive, they in their mindset, like have a very specific dynamic, right? Like they would be submissive, she would be submissive, and I'm like the master puppeteer organizing this like threesome type thing. So yeah. And again, everything is fluid and it changes. And uh, that's the beauty of it. (laughs) Basically, people can approach you with any ideas and you'd love to entertain and talk to them about them. Oh my gosh. The weirder, the better, because my brain is like, let's solve this problem. (laughs) Ah, relatable. It. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yep. You know, uh, that's a whole different tangent. I will not go down that tangent. <laughs> I am just grateful that you are doing the work you're doing. And it sounds like, seems like you are loving it and, and have lots of happy clients who have gotten to experience it. So, yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And thank you for, for coming on today and sharing, you know, a bit about your history and your story and how we got here. And it's, I don't know, I think it's, fun for us to get to see behind right like there's often like a facade and and to see behind that like oh this is what fuels that and like it's genuine you're not just like getting paid to to do these acts because you don't want to do them like they they truly light you up and you're Mm -hmm. truly excited Mm -hmm. about it and i think that's fantastic so yeah thank Thank you you. yeah another little tidbit of poly and the ds dynamic Mm -hmm. i think the social norm in BDSM was like, a goddess can have many subs, but a slave can only have one goddess. And I'm like, that's like, no. You're, they're a slut. You know, like if you're going to put these rules on them, they're going to cheat on you. So yeah, pimp them out. <laughs> <Climb up. laughs> like, let them be who they want to be, right? Yeah. Like, that's. Yeah. We just all want to be who we truly are, like our authentic selves. So if you're going to be there as a dominant for somebody guiding them, like see them for who they actually are and accept it and let them shine in the way that they want to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love that, that, that weaving in the like, yeah, sure. You have a connection, you have a dynamic, but they're not yours. They still are themselves and right. and you are sure. co-creating together right. ultimately yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah thank you so much for sharing that and for everything like finn said it's been a delight to talk with you is there anything else you wanted to get out there before we wrap up i mean if you're not having fun you should probably question why you're doing it <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Question it and maybe start to think about how, how can yeah. I do it different? Yeah. yeah. How to make it more fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I think that's a wonderful place to leave it. I agree. Go have more fun, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank awesome. you so much, May. Yeah. Thank you, May. Thank you. And we are back. Thank you so much, May, for coming on, sharing your story, and for just, I don't know, sharing a lot of laughs with us, too. It was awesome interview, and we really appreciated spending time with you. Yeah, I think one of my favorite quotes was right at the end when, when May said, if, if you're not having fun, you might want to reconsider why you're doing what you're doing. Yes, so, yes, yes. Thank you, May, for coming on, sharing your story, and as Emma said, laughing all the way with us. <laughs> it was an absolute delight. And now I will think about Easter eggs a little bit differently. Yep. <laughs> I, our Amazon cart is full oh, boy. of Easter eggs oh, for, the, boy. for this year's Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Next year's Easter egg hunt. <laughs> uh, a quick reminder to go to our website, go to the podcast tab, and you can find links to all of May's work as well as photos of her too. So go and check that out. Please do. We highly recommend it. We, we love this type of work. And so, yeah. Thank you for supporting it. Yes. And a final reminder, too, that our in-person community retreat is coming up September 13th to the 15th, 2024. To find out more, go to the community tab on our website, and you can find out all of the information right there. And next week. Next week. We've got an interview coming up. We do. Two amazing people from New York City, Baron Fifi, joining us. Amazing conversation. So you're going to want to come back in a week and listen. You're not going to want to miss that. (laughs) All right. We'll see everybody in a few days. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening.